Welcome to week two. <laughs> Hi, welcome to week two. I'm Jamie, and I'm here with Amanda. And today we are talking about STEAM preschool activities for STEM enrichment. This six week e course is based on our ebook that we have put together for you. And we walk you through science, technology, engineering, mathematics, art, and mathematics, all activities for preschoolers. So one thing, my name is Jamie. I blog at Handmade Start, where I focus on art and craft activities for kids. And I'm also a certified art instructor. And so I'm going to turn it over to Amanda to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Amanda, and I blog at The Educator Spin On It, where I share parenting tips and educators tips on how to make your learning experience even more powerful and enriching. I have uh, my reading master's in K-12 and a national board certification in elementary childhood, along with three of my very own special children that stay at home with me. Um, so I'm excited to be talking about technology because <laughs> today I'm kind of an anti-technology person. Um, I don't do screen time before three and um, my daughter is in third grade and came home today and had to do a like end of the unit exam on uh, for science. I'm like, oh, okay, not a problem. It's on um, plants. Like, oh, I know plants. We can help. We can do this. And I get to this worksheet, and it's like, oh, well, you need to open up the textbook, which is all online. <laughs> so we had to like log into the computer, open up the online textbook, find like the activities, and I'm going, wow, these kids are doing all of this technology, and she's eight. <laughs> so. Um, I think that it's a great thing to start talking about, I guess, what is preschool technology. I completely agree. Uh, when I was in the classroom teaching art, I always incorporated some sort of technology as well because the kids are familiar with it. That is what they're doing. It is skills they need to know. And starting at the preschool level is a great age to introduce them and give them some experience. Uh, my three-year-old thinks our TV is a touch screen, like a tablet. So, you know, we have little fingerprints all over. And I was talking to my husband. I'm like, you know, by the time she's a few years older, that could be the case, that the TV is a touch screen. So, you know, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind, that we don't know what technology lies ahead, that we just need to teach them skills as we go and we can't really necessarily prepare them for a future that we don't know what the technology is that we need to you know teach them learning objectives and keep it that okay but I'm starting to ramble on so I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna move on I can keep talking and talking about that but let's keep keep it moving no I was gonna say you and I could totally go on about that because it's just it it's such a hot topic, but yet I think, even as an experienced teacher, I think, okay, really, how can I incorporate all this technology? Like, technology is a buzzword. Like, oh, you need to use technology in your classroom. You know, your kid needs to learn technology. And there's a difference between being able to turn on the iPad and using the iPad as a way to enrich uh, an academic lesson. Um, or open up an app. Like, we don't do a lot of screen time, but we have a learn a language app with a game on the touch screen. And mm -hmm. so, uh, probably once a week, my preschooler gets to do that for about 10 minutes. And it's his little reward for practicing learning Russian with books and speaking Russian. And then he gets to play these little games to reinforce the lessons. So um, I think sometimes it's hard to think, okay, we have all of these tools. We have digital cameras, we have iPhones, we have computers, we have CDs. What else, what else is technology out there right now? 
I can't well, even. The thing, like, <laughs> it just keeps changing, you know? There's the new iPhone, and, you know, every day there's something new. And I think it can get kind of overwhelming. You're like, oh, well, I don't even, you know, how to keep up with it all. Well, it can be very basic. It doesn't have to be you give them the latest technology, you know? My, my kids are not allowed to touch my phone. That is my phone. And so there are, you know, parameters we set. And, Amanda, I think in your post that you posted, uh, as we're posting on our blogs every week, uh, different activities from our book that go along with this course, you had some great suggestions on what is technology for a preschooler. It, yes, and I encourage you to go um, stop by and read it, because uh, sometimes we forget. Like, technology can be used, um, and I'll... Well, talk about it um, in our activity, but it's more of somebody today made a, a video and they had their kid take a whole bunch of pictures and they put it into, what's it called, You, Jamie, you probably know, a stop frame? Stop. Yeah, where it was like one picture, but they used the kids' toys and crafts mm -hmm. and they showed like uh, one of those play school balls and it was sitting on a leaf and they took a whole bunch of pictures of it like rolling on the leaf and then um, they added the like an egg carton caterpillar that came next and then they pretended to have it eat through like the leaves and they took a whole bunch of, they had their child take a whole bunch of pictures of this and then they put it into a video and it was the life cycle of a butterfly. <laughs> So we're taking that um, science concept and we're just having the children do it in a different way, including technology. So maybe they read a story about it. Maybe they ordered butterflies or we go out to our, um, our milkweed plants and collect our own butterflies and we actually watch um, the whole metamorphosis of, of a butterfly. And then you can enhance it even further by adding that little bit of technology technology in uh, to that lesson to make it an even more, I guess, well-rounded or enriched, uh, reinforced concept. And I think some kids right now are very much in tune with technology. And like there are some kids who are going to remember it more when you incorporate technology. Just like there are some kids when you do art, they're going to remember it more because children learn it I guess different rates and different ways and so we have to kind of as parents and teachers try a whole bunch of things and figure out what works best for our children. Well and that's one thing and this is kind of a little off topic but as a parent uh, I definitely encourage finding out what kind of learner your child is. A lot of children it could be a visual person like I know I'm visual if I see it I'm going to remember it more than if I just hear it. Uh, some Students, you know, or children, they hear things better. Some are tactile. They want to feel it. Some like to get up and move and actually, you know, do movement. So if you find out what type of learner your child is, that's going to help you understand what is going to hook them and keep them engaged in the lesson. So definitely a technical uh person that is interested in that is going to be more interested in an activity that, like you said, let's learn about the life cycle, but do it with a stop motion animation, which how cool is that? That's right. cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, you are an awesome teacher. I want to do that. <laughs> I used to do it with fifth grade. I haven't done stop motion at the preschool level, but that's not to say you couldn't do it. I could totally see working together with your child, almost like a family project in doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and even letting your preschooler, yes, touch the camera. They, You can teach them to use the camera correctly. Well, and it looked like she had it on a tripod because the camera frame never moved. And well, so and that's the key in the stop motion is you want the camera steady, and then you just move the little object where whatever direction you're moving. Yeah. So, and it wasn't you could tell it wasn't professional, and the kid helped, but it's like that is exactly what Jamie and I are talking about tonight. <laughs> like, yay! Um, 
which brings us almost what to our activity. Do we get to say it yet? Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's get it on Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited for this one because I'm I love hand, handing my children my camera, and I actually brought it because. Um, we have like a tiny, what do they call them, a digital elf. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little busted. <laughs> it's been dropped a few times. Uh, so like half of it, you can't quite see the full screen and it's cracked. So I have absolutely no problem handing it over to my children because this is kind of like our kid-friendly camera. And it does do video, so they can help me with that. And my kids know that. I just say, okay, here's the camera. And even my four-year-old now knows how to turn it on and use the viewfinder. Mm -hmm. And we've been trying to teach him that once you turn it on, like you can't touch the lenses. <laughs> you have to turn it off when you're done. And kind of, I guess, with technology, you can't just hand it to them and expect they're going to know it. Um, it's almost like a little bit extra part of the lesson. I mean, like, what do you find, Jamie, with your? Yeah, well, my number one tip and to avoid a cracked screen <laughs> is use the wrist strap or neck strap. Now, sometimes in the point-and-shoot cameras, like what you just showed, yeah. in the box there's a little strap that comes with it, and most people just kind of toss it. <laughs> but that is important if you're working with a child. I recommend put that wrist strap on and make them put it on their wrist. That way if they drop or let go, the cameras don't go. And I know now from working with over a thousand elementary students, we never broke one camera. So um, this was grown up broken. <laughs> at best. Hey, grown ups need the wrist strap too. <laughs> Oh, that's an awesome tip. I would never even think of that. So, Yeah, that's my number one tip when working with the camera. Number two would be teaching them exactly what you said. Turn it on, turn it off, how to zoom in, how to zoom out. Mm -hmm. And if you have a tripod, that is a great way to learn. Because the camera is steady. It's not going to fall or go anywhere. And a lot of times when a child holds up a camera, they tend to like want to tilt right away. So having the tripod, they can actually see of keeping it straight, which gives them a more, you know, sometimes successful photo, and then plus they feel cool that they're using the tripod. Now, I know that um, I always to get mine to, like when I was learning, I, I was told to kind of take a deep breath and make yourself still. Mm -hmm. Like That's hard for people to wear that. <laughs> it's really hard. So I think he took like 20 pictures, and one out of 20 was in focus. <laughs> yes, that's going to happen. A lot of photos. Um, my camera, you press the shutter halfway, and it will auto-focus. So I did teach uh, my preschoolers. Well, I have one five, one three. I taught both of them, you know, how to press it halfway. The five-year-old could do it, no problem. My three-year-old, yeah, she's still working on it, you know. But I think just getting them familiar with how the camera works, and like you said, you don't want to touch the lens. You want to keep that part clean. So you definitely want to show them what they can and, you know, do and what they cannot touch, and that helps set the parameters then of what the expectation is when using the camera. Um, also, you know, my five-year-old, he's even used my DSLR camera before, which, when I'm right there. <laughs> but once they learn the skills and, have, and show that they're responsible, then, you know, you can kind of let them do a little more each time. Now, my three-year-old, yes, yeah, she still has what I would consider our kid-friendly camera. So she doesn't touch my next one. <laughs> she needs to earn that privilege still. Right. Well, and that's, I guess, it's knowing your child and and at what age and stage of development they are at. Um, exactly. I don't think you can put an age. Like, I can't say, oh, at three, then they're ready. It really right. is an individual based on your child and what they're, you know, 
where they're at developmentally, ability, all of that. You have to know your child. And now, um, I personally recommend for children, we've tried some of like the kid versions of cameras, and we find that they're very, very grainy. They are. And so it's almost better to get, uh, like they have refurbished cameras that are sometimes like lower prices. Like if, if price is, an, is a worry or a concern, um, like you don't want your kid touching your camera because there are chances. Like they, they can break. Cameras can break with grown-ups too. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so I think though looking for sometimes more grown-up but less expensive versions, I found give a better clarity to the pictures. Like, because we tried a kid version and my kids just got so frustrated because they couldn't see the images as clear and it was a, like a big delay. And by the time you compared the cost, it was like, would have been more effective just to get the adult version, a, a less expensive for it's not the 35 zoom or what is it, the 8 megabyte? Mm -hmm. I yeah. completely agree. We have um, two of the kid cameras as well. And I find it's better almost for like the toddler age where you give them one just so they can mimic what they see is going on. Um, I do have a point and shoot one that is an old camera. It's I don't even know. It's really old. But it still works. It turns on and zooms and that's what they can use. And I would do exactly what you said. I would recommend a cheaper, just kind of low-end camera and purchase one of those rather than one of those kid uh, cameras. And as we're talking, I'm thinking, I wonder if, if like, a pre our preschool classrooms or, you know, local teachers, not something to that, you know, when it comes time for for gifts for holidays or teacher appreciation gifts, like digital cameras and other technology tools that you can learn make great gifts for classrooms um, so that, you know, the teachers when they hear that parents want more technology, that they have the tools for the children. So we could sit and go on all I the time. I love that, yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I had to write a grant every year to get new technology, but yeah, I mean, that is, what a great little, like, teacher surprise. It doesn't have to be a fancy thing, but even if you found one or got together with a group of parents and asked the teacher, like, what, what technology do you need? Do you have a digital camera the kids can use? If not, can we help you purchase it, set up a photo studio in the, in the classroom for, you know, science lab photos or something? So, um we totally digressed on our activity. Yeah, so we're getting back to our activity. <laughs> so let me go ahead and just show what um, we ended up doing. So okay. we're reading a photo book. And if you have purchased the ebook that goes along with this e-course, in it are some printables that have number sheets. So these are included in the ebook. If you purchase that, you can use that. But you don't have to. You can make your own as well. So simply we're, you know, printing the numbers. We did 1 through 10. And then your child is going to go around and find different objects that correspond. So, okay, my camera's going to work. Okay, there we go. So we have one truck with the number 1. It's the one-to-one -one correspondence. And these are all taken by my 5-year-old. And I love he started to think about the arrangement around the or the number, so he he took some pride in uh, doing that. <laughs> I wanted to show um, that this way is a simple way. This is just a dollar store photo album, so we printed the photos of size four by six and just stuck them in, and we taped a paper cover on. Although I also think it'd be cool if your child made a cover too. Of course, always incorporating that drawing in. And another way to do it is simply hole punch the corner and put it on a keychain or a key ring. And so then this way the child can flip through and see their photos as well. And I will have to say, number five was my favorite photo. 
compositionally. <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't really quite thinking like that, but he did his photos one through four, and I was showing them if you take a step closer and get closer to the object, how that changed the photograph? And so then I, it was funny. Let me see if I can get number four out. Because there is a difference. He was doing the overview. And then we went down to a more kind of perspective difference. Okay. I'm probably making everyone dizzy by holding my photo. <laughs> we'll just close our eyes. Sorry. What, Amanda, why don't you share what you did? I was just going to say what's really great about it is that you and I are taking the exact the same activity and doing it with our preschoolers. And it turns out similar but totally different. Um, so again, we had the same activity where you're going to make a number book. We're reinforcing what the numbers are. Uh, number sense, which is the actual representation of that number. So if the number is four, number sense would mean the child understands four trucks is the same as the written number four. And then by making a book, we're connecting literacy into that digital math book. So it's, it's a great comprehensive lesson. Um, if you watched and did our science challenge from last week, uh, I would estimate that like a 15 to 20 minute activity. This one is a little bit longer and more involved. So if you're thinking 15 minutes, I'm going to warn you it doesn't take 15 minutes with a preschooler. This would be either like um, two 20 minute sessions spread out over two different days or a longer period of time um, if your preschooler is engaged. Uh, and the reason I say that is because it takes them time to actually think. Because once you get on uh, number one, is easy. So it was funny because we did one truck too. And <laughs> we've all had boys. <laughs> yeah. So what, um, he took the pictures, and then I quick put them into a CVS photo book. Um, and the photo book made it really nice. It gave a caption at the top and a caption at the bottom. And so I just put the number one. And then I wanted to reinforce that the number one and the word one was the same thing. Um, and that is more literacy. It's like a learning to read a sight word, the number words. So it has one truck. So I'm trying to connect the word and the picture so that he's actually making a beginning reader book uh, that he can read to his family. So two fire engines. You don't have to think when there's two, but um, once you get to like eight, <laughs> then the children are like, what do I have that's eight? <laughs> because I told mine we have to find toys that are all in the same category. So, because he wanted to do like some blocks and some finger puppets. And I was like, no, you have to choose a toy that has at least eight. And so he's, of course, running around the room, running around the house, going, well, I have two trucks. I got two fire engines. <laughs> I'm like, so I had to do a little bit of redirecting, like, oh, let's maybe look for smaller things that we might have a lot of. And so, at about eight or nine, I had to start giving him some options. Like, oh, do you think we have more than eight blocks? Do you think we have more than eight this? And he's like, well, I don't know. Maybe we should count them. I'm like, okay. So by this time, you know, you've counted one and then two and then three and taken the picture. So you can kind of see how it is a longer activity. And then, of course, we got to the last um, nine. With the CVS photo books, you can only have 10 pages. So if you wanted to do 1 through 10, you couldn't have a cover page. <laughs> That's my forewarning. Because we got to 10, and then I went to make the book, and I was like, oh no, I can only fit 10. And uh, my son, at the very end, goes, well, I want a picture with all my toys. I thought, well, that's an awesome idea. So I had him lay down, and I put him 
all the toys around him. And that way, it gave a purpose for our book, too. And so we just wrote, how many toys? And we practiced reading it over and over again. And now, he's inspired, and he wants to read, which never happens. So I love it. I love that it's like a little book, too, and um, adding the words in. And that's where even if you know you didn't want to have it printed and you just did something like this, you still have the whole backside where you could have your preschooler right, right on there. Mm -hmm. like add the word in too. Or, or even on the back, you can just take a permanent marker and write the number four, and then have them put four beads on it when you make it an interactive book. Like, there's so many ways to spin it and change it. And I think that we're going to try to do a science um, easy reader. I just haven't quite figured out. Like, numbers are easy. It's easy to do sequential. Um, so if you have any great ideas of, like, science books, you should let me know. Science, I'd have to think of. But you could do colors. That would be easy. Um, oh, yes. I want to do that now. <laughs> colors and Something just to get them familiar with the camera and working is just have them photograph their favorite things, make up my favorite things book. And then that's just, you know, you could label the toys and once again reinforce some of those words. Uh, my son, who's five, we're working on sight words right now. Uh, and I just was thinking, I'm like, oh, we should do some for his sight words. Like, incorporate. He loves making up the sentence. And then he doesn't enjoy writing it so much. So maybe we can incorporate, like, taking a photo and having them write the sentence that goes with it. Oh, photo journaling. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what I love is that with little books, it gives them ownership of something and something that they can take with them, not that they're going anywhere. But so, something that they can hold and say, hey, this is what I did. And, it gives them that sense of accomplishment. And in learning, that's what, you know, in order to be a lifelong learner, you want to encourage that lifelong learner. Yes, and then, too, like, if you don't have access to, um, like, a printer or you didn't want to send it to a photo lab and develop your um, photos, we found, it's been around for quite often, but it's called Little Bird Tales. Um, and I'm sure there's a million other ones, but you upload your pictures onto the page, and then you can record your kids reading the story, and then it plays back. And the reason we use it is because our family is in other states. So we try and make a book, and either it's the kids' drawings or, or their writing, but then they can read it, and then we just email it to our family. Oh, what a wonderful idea. It's a really cute thing. And then the parents get to see either their pictures that they took or the pictures they drew, and they get to hear their sweet voices reading because that really is, that's really what makes it, just, just like sitting on the couch and listening to your child read the book that they just made about math with their own camera, and they have, there's something about a preschooler that's like proud and happy of his work, like, they just, their voice sounds different when it's theirs. Well, yeah, and that's kind of what I was talking about, too, the excitement that they get, you know, when, when a lot of times people like, ooh, and they want to tell you so much, you know, they're like, oh, oh, and they can barely get the words out fast enough. And that's where you want to keep that excitement going. But, you know, you're adding in those learning objectives along the way. So it's incorporating that technology. And, hey, we're doing math, too, you know. So, it's, once again, looking at technology as a tool, you know, you could do the same activity with drawing. You could, in writing, you could draw the number, you could draw one circle. You could draw, you know, do the number two and add two circles. So, even if you didn't have a camera, you could still do the activity and what the learning objective is. Technology is just one way to hook in your child and get them interested in the activity. Okay, well, did you have um, any other extensions that you wanted to add, Amanda? 
Um, I could like extend technology so many different ways. Um, I actually think that there's an activity in our ebook that I'm not going to say <laughs> because I want you to buy the book. <laughs> but um, I'm going to probably do that activity with the video camera um, and this uh, kind of math concept. And so um, I'm excited to kind of challenge myself on a continuous basis. And so I like using, I guess, having that a resource of an ebook um, where I can just pull it up on my iPad for some inspiration while I'm like making dishes or doing dishes or while the kids are playing, I can kind of, I don't know, skim through it and say, oh, how can I use this activity with the lessons I'm teaching? And so I think that uh, although it wasn't uh, geared for numbers in our ebook, I think I'm going to try that this week with mine to kind of keep the excitement going for our number book that we talked about today. Well, and I do. I think I know which activity. I, <laughs> I know the book. We're not telling you. You have to have the book. Yes, which we'll put in the link on the event page so okay. that it can take you right there. Um, but that would be a great extension to continue. If your child really enjoyed this activity, that would be a great next step for it. Um, also, the ebook, we've done the thinking for you. So you may be thinking, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I have a camera, but I don't, what do I do? You know. So we've done all the thinking for you. Uh, in the ebook, we outline the materials you need, very simplified directions. Uh, our steps, I mean, it's not a super long direction-wise. So we want to make it easy for busy parents. Because we, I have three kids, Amanda has three kids. We know, we get it we're all busy. So we want you to be able to feel like that you can incorporate these activities into your everyday life and do hands-on activities with your children. And I think even those of us moms like myself that don't want our kids in front of screen time, I think just remembering that technology isn't necessarily in front of screen time. Um, because there's so many other tools uh, calculators, digital digital um, scales, alarm clocks, uh, pedometers, watches. Uh, it, the list keeps going and it will, as you brought up earlier, Jamie, it's going to continue to grow and change. You know, who knows in two years our TVs may be touch screen. Um, there well, may, the three year old will be all set. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't know what type of technologies are in there and so if we slowly integrate um, how to use them responsibly as tools to enhance our day versus as um, I guess a non-interactive experience uh, then I think our children are going to be much better off and have the skills they need to face the new technologies and be able to use them in the workforce because I, I can only imagine what's going to be there in 10 years or 20 years. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, we have no idea what is, yeah. you know, what our children, what the industries will be. And so that's where we can't get, I think sometimes parents feel like, well, I just, you know, we don't know, I don't know what to do. And they kind of get a little, you know, lost in trying to keep up with that. But in learning with technology, it's not about trying to keep up with it. It's about teaching them the learning objectives, and technology is just one simple tool. So I think it's important to keep in mind. It's just one simple tool, one way to get your child in front of the data in, you know, this case, in numbers. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be every day either. <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be every day. No, we don't work with a digital camera every day. <laughs> so if you did join in the challenge and you made a number, a digital number book with your child in any way, we've shown you three, but of course you can come up with your own. We'd love to have you stop by either the educator spin on it or handmade kid art and check in under our technology challenge and let us know how it went. 
Was it successful with your preschooler? And also, if you have any questions, we are here for you. All right. And join us next week. We will be going into engineering, which was my son's favorite part of the entire book. So I'm super excited for next week. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with it. Yay for engineering! <laughs> Go All right. Well, thank you for joining us. And once again, the ebook is Steam Preschool Activities for STEM Enrichment.